Okay, who here has been told that they're too old or too young to do something? Like riding a bike or even trying a new hobby? Raise your hand if you have. So pretty much everyone. So I want you to reflect on that. At the time, did you listen to that person? Did you think, maybe I am too old, maybe I'm too young to do this? We are told from the minute we're born that a number is pressed on us, our age, telling us milestones must be met by certain ages. Once we reach particular ages, there are things that we just can't go back and do. But what if I was to tell you this is a lie? Age is nothing more than a deception and is actually completely irrelevant. And this is especially when it comes to making a scientific discovery, because you are never too young or too old to start exploring science. Take a look at this man. Undoubtedly, everyone here knows that this is Albert Einstein. But there are a lot of misconceptions surrounding this man that may surprise you. One of the biggest ones is typically we see pictures of him when he's around 60, like this one. So naturally, we come to think that he achieved more when he was this age. But actually, he was 26 when he published his most famous work, His Laws of Relativity. More of an unfamiliar name to you all is Jacob Nathan, who just a few years ago discovered that with the right blend of enzymes, he could decompose and then repurpose plastics. The applications of this will be limitless and are imperative for our sustainable future. And he did this at the age of 18, at his final year of school. I'm not saying that you have to be under 30 to make an incredible discovery, because there is a great example. Without a doubt, this woman has affected everyone's his lives today. Dame Sarah Gilbert, who, aged 58 in November 2020, released her positive clinical trial results for the first ever COVID vaccine. In terms of the science, you might be thinking, OK, this isn't revolutionary. They've been around for a long, long time. But in terms of the everyday, haven't your lives been affected by this completely in the past few years? And when looking at the age that scientists are when they make their discoveries, She's actually not an anomaly. When looking at the Nobel Prize winners, it was abundantly clear that a disproportionate number of discoveries are made by the middle-aged at 66%, and only 7% made by the scientists under 30. This is possibly surprising. I'm not saying that it's the most accurate model for this, since there are many scientists that have incredible contributions to their fields that never win prizes, but it is one of the most internationally recognized platforms, and I spent hours going through the archives to find this. Anyway, back to the graph. This still leaves more than a quarter of scientists unaccounted for, and these are the scientists that made their discovery past the age of 65. A name a lot of people in physics would recognize is Peter Higgs, who is the namesake and theorizer of the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson essentially provides particles with their mass, so is basically a building block for everything you see around you and in the universe. Pretty big stuff, right? And he had this discovery proved aged 83 through the experimental work of physicists at CERN. He's a perfect example of how often the theory is far ahead of its time, since he had to wait 50 years almost for his discovery to be proved. So what am I saying? What does this all mean? What's my point showing you these great scientists? What links them? Well, the first thing that links them is curiosity. They were all innately curious. A famous story tells of Einstein, very young, sick at home in bed, with his father gifting him a compass. The young boy was mesmerized, yet perplexed by the invisible forces at work on the compass. And he would later describe this experience to be what compelled him to pursue science and find all the answers to this question. And this leads me to the next link, productivity. Because these scientists were so curious, they were all completely productive all the time, exhausting. But it's true. A science research team at Northwestern took physicists of careers of 20 years or more who published at least one paper every five years. Sure enough, they did find that the younger scientists were more likely to discover something but it had nothing to do with their age. It was completely on their productivity. They were more likely to try experiments that were new and try them again and again and again. So therefore, more likely to stumble upon something good. That is, if you have constant productivity, 
the probability of my 9 year old grandma discovering something is equal to me discovering something, age 16. And this random impact rule holds for everyone, all scientists in different fields, with different career lengths, with different ages. This sounds too easy, right? You want to discover something big. But there is that tricky factor of luck. Random variables completely out of your control. Many discoveries have been mistakes. People have just stumbled upon them. So many people may say, OK, 100 years ago, even a few decades ago, it was easier to discover something. Because as a collective, we just didn't know as much. And you could say they're right. Looking at authors when a discovery is published, from Albert Einstein when he published his Laws of Relativity, there was just one name on that paper, his own. But by contrast, the two 2012 papers announcing the discovery of the Higgs boson, there were roughly a 1,000 authors on each. So this is kind of doom and gloom. Yes, you may need a far larger team and more resources and possibly more skill to discover something, but I still see it. If you're curious and you have constant productivity, you can discover something. At any rate, having a range of ages within a team can only help your progress towards a discovery. Having a diverse range of ages within a team brings different experiences and different thinking styles that can only spark innovative problem solving. So next time you're not sure about hiring the angsty teen or the retiree for a job, think again, because their contribution can only enhance your results. So I want you to think back to what I asked you at the beginning. What will you do next time someone tells you that you're too old or too young to do something? I encourage you to prove them wrong. Thank you. Good luck. He's stolen too. Oh, I'm glad.